Hey everybody, Pastor Dan here. I hope you're all doing well and staying healthy. Uh, over the last couple weeks or so, I have received maybe a dozen or so emails, uh, phone calls, private messages, things like that, uh, from a handful of folks in our congregation asking when we are planning to restart in-person worship services at church. Uh, for many of us, if not for all of us, I know this church online thing is getting old. Uh, we miss seeing each other every week. We miss connecting in person. Uh, I know I'm getting sick of preaching into a computer uh, with a built-in camera every single week. Uh, and with New York State now officially in phase one of reopening, uh, I know a lot of us are starting to wonder, when are things going to get back to normal at our church? So that's what this video is going to delve into. The Church Council has met a couple of times now to discuss our plan for restarting in-person events at church. Uh, it was a topic of discussion at our council meeting on May 4th, and we also held a special meeting to talk uh, specifically about this on May 19th. The minutes for both of those meetings are linked below. Both conversations were super productive, um, and the goal in this video is to bring you all up to speed on uh, basically where we're at, where we're headed, what the council uh, is thinking. <clears throat> in the first forward email this week, uh, we have included a number of documents that the council has been reviewing throughout this process. Please take a look at those if this is something you're interested in so that you can stay informed, stay in the loop, and see the broad range of considerations that need to be made <clears throat> as we move forward uh, towards safely restarting with in-person worship. Let's start out, though, by talking about the large events, uh, the big in-person gatherings, chief among those being worship services on Sunday mornings. As you probably know, uh, our state, New York, <clears throat> has unveiled a four-step or a four-phase plan to reopen. And as I'm recording this video uh, on the night of Tuesday, May 26th, <clears throat> we are about one week into phase one. Now, the council has reviewed both state, local, and federal guidelines, um, and while some of the guidelines break down these phases a little bit differently, the general guidance for houses of worship is to hold off on the large in-person gatherings, like worship services, until phase four. Now, some of the guidelines out there do allow for like a partial restarting of in-person worship in phase three. But that would always be with um, <clears throat> some pretty strict social distancing measures in place, things like uh, alternating pews, wearing masks, in some cases no singing, uh, no fellowship time before or after service. People will basically just be kind of ushered in directly to their seats uh, right before the service and then dismissed pew by pew uh, to head straight out afterwards. And even then, with those kind of protective measures in place, it's still recommended generally uh, that folks over the age of 60 stay away and stream the services from home. Now, I probably don't need to tell you this, uh, but if we were to hold in-person worship services without folks over the age of 60 in attendance, we would be missing a substantial chunk of our congregation. And really, who wants to have a worship service where we can't sing, there's no fellowship time, you have to wear masks, you have to keep six-foot distance? I mean... <laughs> If you can't sing or interact with anybody, you might as well be watching from home, right? So what that means for us is the council has decided that in-person worship services and other similar large group events at church are not going to resume until our state is firmly in phase four of reopening. Now that does not mean that the first Sunday of phase four is going to be our first Sunday back. We're not trying to set dates right now or establish some sort of rigid timeline. If anything, this whole pandemic has shown us that those sorts of plans off go awry. Uh, but we will be monitoring the situation very closely. We're going to be staying in contact with local health officials. Uh, and of course, we might change our plan as the situation evolves. It's certainly possible. But our current plan is to wait until there's a start date announced for phase four. And at that point, the council will meet to begin planning and hopefully then set a date for our first Sunday back in person. That's our plan as of right now for the large group events. When we think about uh, smaller events, smaller gatherings take place in the church building. Stuff like Bible studies, the labyrinth, meetings, things like that. We will be restarting each of those uh, individually on a case-by-case -case basis, and that will likely begin once we are in phase three of reopening. 
So a little bit earlier than large group events. Now, in order for any like smaller events to happen, to take place in our church building during phase three, there's going to need to be social distancing measures in place. There's going to have to be uh, a plan for how to disinfect the area after the event. And we may still end up having to discourage those over the age of 60 uh, or anyone with health issues uh, from attending. Again, we're going to kind of fill that out once we're there and we see what public health officials are recommending. And that is all going to be worked out again, case by case, once there's a start date for phase three. When that point comes, uh, our church will get in, uh, get in touch with the folks who run these smaller group activities, and then we will work together to establish a plan for uh, what restarting looks like. That leaves us with outreach events, and this would normally be a time of the year when we would have a lot going on in that department. Sadly, we've had to make some changes, uh, but I am very happy to say that our outreach team has been hard at work uh, these past many weeks trying to figure out how to do the most good possible for the community, even in the midst of this pandemic. We have sadly decided to cancel the Arts Fest activities, the, the bake sale, the stuff for kids that we'd usually host on the front lawn of the church during Arts Fest. Uh, that was a huge hit last year, and God willing, that's going to make a huge comeback uh, next year. But for this year, there's just too much uncertainty. We're not even sure if the Arts Fest is happening. We don't know yet. Uh, so we are pulling the plug on that. The rubbish sale, however, has not been canceled yet. Um, we're still accepting donations from the rummage sale. Uh, if you have those, contact the church and we'll est establish a time for you to bring them by. Um, but the rummage sale doesn't happen until, you know, closer to the fall, like early September. And we have no idea where we're going to be by that point. Um, but the outreach team will be making a firm decision one way or another on the rummage sale by some point in July. So we'll have a clearer picture on what exactly it's going to look like, whether it, whether it's still on, whether it's canceled, whether it's postponed, in a couple months. <clears throat> but for right now, the rummage sale is still on as planned. We're also planning to restart the gathering table, our weekly meal for the community in July. And that's going to take the form of a carryout or takeaway service. Now, there's a whole lot of logistics that need to be worked out for that to actually happen. Uh, that's why we're aiming for July as the first month back for that. Uh, so please stay tuned for more updates as we continue to plan and work out the details of what that's going to look like. Last but not least on the outreach front, the teen closet is still operational, uh, but it's by appointment only. Uh, so we are still accepting donations. If you have clothes to drop off or if you or someone you know would like to visit the teen closet, please contact the church office, set up appointment, and we will make that happen. I know this isn't the news many of us were hoping for. Quarantine is getting old for everyone. Uh, no one wants to stay under lockdown, uh, especially as we head into the summer. But here's the thing. Here's the, here's the good news, the silver lining in all of this. The church is still open. We are not closed. We haven't stopped being the church. We're not holding large in-person gatherings right now. But that's true. But the church has never been a large in-person gathering. That's not what the church is. The church is a community centered around Jesus that we are all still very much a part of. And we have so many opportunities throughout the week for you to stay engaged with that community. We worship together Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. virtually. And I'll tell you what, as the, as the person who you know, gets to see all the data and statistics for our YouTube channel, it blows me away every Sunday at 10 a.m. to see 30, 40, sometimes even 50 screens watching our online worship services at the same time. And then many more folks tuning in to catch it later in the week. We have a face-to-face -face prayer meeting on Zoom every Monday at 3 p.m. All you have to do to get connected with that is join the prayer chain. We send out the link for that, uh, usually on the weekend or, or sometimes Monday morning. We've got a virtual Bible study on Thursday nights, a young adult group that meets on Friday nights, and we are brainstorming even more ideas for virtual events, gatherings, smaller gatherings, once it's okay to start doing those sorts of things off campus. There's a lot coming up that's going to give you an opportunity to get involved and a lot going on right now. 
So if you miss church, come back to church. Get connected uh, in one or two of these regular opportunities we offer every single week for you to stay engaged. And I want to encourage you all to stay connected with each other as well. Call your friends from church. That's what the church directories are for. If you're healthy and you're not in an at-risk category, you know, meet at a park with somebody. You know, keep distance, keep your masks on, but go for a walk together. Send cards and emails to each other. Pray for each other. And please keep our church in prayer too. Pray for the church council as um, we try to exercise wisdom and make these really important decisions about reopening. Pray for me and know that I am praying for you too. We're going to get through this. We're going to be back together eventually. And when that day comes, I am confident that our church is going to be better than ever. So stay safe, stay healthy, stay engaged. Reach out to the church if you have any questions at all about the information I've shared in this video. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless.